Once we connect our MCP, as you can see that we'll have two extra icons that we would normally not have on Claude. Can you list my Google Docs? So as you see, it goes ahead and prints the data. It's also pretty fast, like it's blazingly fast. I turn this data into JSON and I respond to my AI agent. So you've probably seen this big hype that MCP is the future, this is the next big trend in AI. But in this video, I actually want us to analyze what are the MCPs and show you how I was able to build an MCP that can connect to 2000 plus integrations. Some influencers might be flexing that they created an MCP for your WhatsApp or emails or GitHub or file management system. But the annoying part with all of those MCPs is that you have to install all of them separately. And it's not a super straightforward process. And the difference here is that I've created an MCP that you install once and it's able to access your WhatsApp, Telegram, email, Gmail, whatever you can think of. And most of those parts are done by no code. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how it works. In very basic terms, MCP is a model context protocol. You can think of it as a plugin that you install to your AI. But basically you have an AI client. Let's say right now it's Claude. What if the AIs that you're using today were able to actually send emails, reply to your comments on Facebook or Instagram, maybe work with leads, get you new clients, do some of your work. That could be pretty cool. And then you ask yourself, well, but how will that work? And the simple answer is MCPs. So as I mentioned, you can think about MCPs as the plugins that you can just connect to your AI to extend functionality. So you can act an MCP server and what the server is basically doing is just calling external tools. And you can connect it to an external API that already exists or create your own functionality via code that is currently running on the user computer. I think in the future, they'll move it to the cloud-based versions where you'll be able to just simply click and install MCPs without downloading anything into your computer, but most likely there'll be two versions, the local and cloud-based. So for this example, I'm using Claude and to make it work with MCPs, you have to install the desktop version. So unfortunately it is not working with the mobile or the web version, but if we go ahead and install Claude on our computer, we can go ahead and click Claude settings. And here in the settings, we can go to the developer tab you should have this edit config button. Basically here you will see the MCP servers that you have connected to your cloud. So once you click edit config, basically it'll teleport you and here you have this cloud desktop config.json. So you can click edit it with your favorite tool. So open with, and for example, I'm using Visual Studio Code. So once you click that file, you should see something like this, or most likely you will see an empty file. And if you do, you can simply copy this template and replace some things for your own MCP. So, but basically this file is currently what is instructing Claude on the different MCPs that we have on our computer and how we can run them once we launch Claude desktop version. So we'll get back to it later. So first, let me show you what I was able to build. Once we connect our MCP, as you can see that we'll have two extra icons that we would normally not have on Claude. So we'll have this tool that says there are two tools available. We can click and see. And there's this connected MCPs and we can see that we've installed my MCP. So if I type something like list actions, it'll be able to show us what it can do. So whenever it executes an MCP action, it prompts us with this model. So I'll go ahead and click allow. And once you click allow for this chat, it'll not be asking you this again, especially that we have only two functions. We have document management. So basically you can connect your Google Docs via Claude. You'll be able to instruct it on what to do, like maybe create a file about this, edit this file. So think of it as a virtual employee. We have Notion integration where you can uh, manage your CRM and Notion communications. So for example, you can pull your emails, tell Claude to reply to the last five emails in this and that style. You can send a message on Telegram. Uh, there's also a calendar where you can manage your events and just live or schedule and a small integration with the Google Sheet. But all of these are expendable. So with that one MCP, you can basically add more and more things as we go. So how about we test this? So I gave it a permission to send a message to me via Telegram bot. So let's go ahead and ask it to do so. Hello, can you send me a funny joke about AI gurus on YouTube via my Telegram. So as you see, it asked me to execute an action since this is the second one that we haven't allowed it to. So I'll go ahead and click allow. I already see that we did receive the message indeed via Telegram. Why did the YouTube AI guru finally take a vacation? Because even after training 1 million parameters, he couldn't optimize his work life balance. So there we have it. But the crazy part is that I'm using Claude and I give it permission to use my Telegram, Google and other things. Well, not Claude directly, but through MCP. 
And it is able to understand what I'm saying to it and turn it into actions like a real employee. We can manage database, we can create Google Docs, edit them, and so on. The useful part here for me personally is replying to emails. So I can say list my emails and go ahead and reply to them. So instead of exposing my personal emails, how about we list some of the test Google Docs? So I'll go ahead and say, can you list my Google Docs? So as you see, it goes ahead and prints the data. It's also pretty fast, like it's blazingly fast. Since here AI runs natively, it's much faster than we would do it through API. But as you see, pull out my documents so I can ask it, hey, give me a link to this document, we can open this. But instead of doing this, how about I ask it to give me data, not in this textual format as chat, since Claude can generate code and run it for us, how about we ask it to generate a UI for us that I can interact with to view my document. Can you create a UI for me so I can view documents? So this thing on Claude is called artifacts. It's basically when it goes ahead and creates the React code, runs it locally and shows us the preview of that code. It went ahead and started creating the code. It extracts the JSON from MCP and it'll generate us beautiful UI in a second. So as you can see here, it added the search thing. So let's see if it actually even works. So let's say we have why Roblox is cool. So I go ahead and type. But if we try to click on it, it doesn't seem like it's working. So we can go ahead and ask Claude to add buttons that will actually open these documents for us. So let's try again why Roblox is cool. I'll go ahead and click open. And as you can see, it pull up my Google Doc. So that's pretty cool. So meanwhile, here's a quick demo that I was able to build. So now let's get into how it actually works. When the user is making any request to Claude, so it sends a message, it is calling our MCP server. And our MCP server, in our example, is calling make.com and it is calling my webhook. So once it called my webhook, it triggers my scenario. My scenario has a smart rotor and the rotor can have access to 2000 plus tools. And then we return the response back to our user. So with that structure, it allows me not to worry about where should I host my accounts like Google, Notion and email and others, because basically it's all stored on Make. And that is the company that people already trust. And in a second, I'll show you how my make.com is set up. But you can also watch this video here where I give a similar idea on how to set up make.com like that. But before that, I want us to jump into the code real fast to show you how you can build your own MCP. So if you go to GitHub, you can find the model context protocol, their official GitHub repo, and they have TypeScript SDK. And here you can find a quick example on how to start with their code. But basically you can create this file locally and you'll have a basic MCP up and running. But here's how it works. You import the MCP settings. You also import Zod to specify the types of the properties that you'll be passing. You create your own MCP server like this, where you pass the version of your server. That'll be the name of your MCP. And here, remember how we have this hammer with tools. This is how you create your own tools. So you go ahead and declare server.tool. You put the name of the tool. So in this example, they have a tool that adds two numbers together. As a second param, we pass an object of properties that AI should be passing to this tool. So in our example, we have A and B, which would be two numbers. But basically, we just say that it should be a number from this library. And then as our third property, we pass a callback function that should be executed. And in our callback functions, we now expect AI to read this instruction and to pass us these properties here. And we do reply to our AI with the content, array, object type, text, and then the actual text is that we turn it back to the string. Since we'll be replying with the text, we're just adding the A and B. So this is the basic idea of the tool in here. So here's how my code works, is I've declared my server, find chat. I have this util function called find chat that takes action name, contains, and details. 
So details would be an object of extra things that I need. Contains is the actual body, for example, of email, document, telegram message, and other things. Action type is to have this routing where we execute different actions from one tool call. And in a nutshell, all it does is basically it calls the make API or my webhook API and passes this params for me. We have two tools. So first tool is to get action list. So once this is called, I return the instruction to AI instead of using description, basically, <laughs> where I go ahead and just describe all of this details of how it should be working. And then I list actions. So if we go to my constants main, we'll see that I have array basically or object with different actions. So for example, adding things to Google Doc. So we have this label, we have description prompt, and we specify what properties the AI should be passing when making API call for this tool. So basically I have my own schema here that I've declared for every single action that I have, what kind of data I expect, when to call this, how it works and so on. Basically this is the information that I pass to AI whenever it calls get actions list. The second function or tool that I have is called call action. As mentioned, we're taking three params here, action name, contains, in the description, I provide some details for AI on how to use this property. Details is empty object where we add extra details. So as our callback, we take this properties, we call our call find chat from here, and we call our API with our custom webhook. And that's about it. To test this MCP, you can run this function. So let me run this to show you. It will start an interface like this that comes with their library where you can click connect your MCP server. You can go ahead and click list tools. You can see the tools that you have where actions, boom, it returned the object, call action. Here you can pass different things. You can run the tool. You can see the console logs here. You can see the history. You can uh, see what other options you have because some MCPs might have resources or prompts pre-built. So if we add a prompt, basically that'll be like a quick text action that the user can resend to his AI by passing a certain variable. But in this example, we're only working with tools. But this MCP inspector could be pretty useful for debugging stage. So as mentioned in the beginning, to make your MCP work with Claude, so let's say you have this code set up or similar code from their library set up locally, to make it work, you have to add this MCP object to the Claude desktop config file. And you should pass any name of your server that you will create and you should pass certain properties here. So the first one is command. So you can either specify node or as what I did here, I specified the pass to node, but you can just say node if you have node installed on your computer. And this is the most important argument is basically you have to specify the exact path of where you're starting MCP file where basically file where you create this MCP server is living. So once you specify that, whenever Claude will be starting It'll be trying to run this command with this file and basically start your own MCP server on the background. So that is the magic behind it. So again, still, if you don't understand, so MCPs are kind of what you would defer as AI agents. They can have access to the data, can be used to query things, maybe to manage your CRM or any other cool use cases that you can think of. But the most important thing is that MCPs are basically like this standardized tool where everybody else will be following the exact same standard where they pass resources, prompts and tools. And if you think about it, what are the core benefits of MCPs? So the first one is it's very simplified integration where you can easily integrate AI with multiple systems. Then uh, intelligent agents, well, more responsive AI agents. So Claude, ChatGPT, they're limited. As mentioned, there are some abilities connected to them as generating images. But with MCPs, that'll be just one of maybe 10,000 tools that can be generated or done with AIs. And reduce complexity. as kind of how to build their plugins for AIs. And now you're wondering, but how does my make.com backend basically works for a user to be able to execute all of those actions? So let me show you. So if we go to make... I've created this scenario where basically I've added multiple tools and I can go ahead and keep on adding these tools. But just for the sake of demo, let me show you a quick walkthrough. So we have a webhook that is being triggered from my MCP right here. We call this webhook. Then we take this params that AI passed us, save it as variables. And then we have this magic rotor. Basically, uh, this rotor determines which action the user wants to execute. Let's say we wanted to send a telegram message. So this is pretty simple flow. So we call send telegram message. And here we have this filter. If action type equals send telegram message, then we basically 
go ahead and take uh, things like contents from params, like the body of the text, execute this command, sending Telegram message. And as a response, we basically tell AI what just happened. So similarly to pull my Google Docs, we have an action called list Google Docs. So if we click here, we can see if action type equals list Google Docs, then Rotor should trigger this flow, list Google Docs. Here, I set up which folder it can have access to, how many files, then we do the error aggregation of where I set up which fields from the documents I actually need, like the time that was created, maybe link, who owns this document. Then I turn this data into JSON and I respond to my AI agent back with this JSON and AI knows what to do with the JSON. So for example, it can give me this text list or if I ask it to generate me this cool UI that I can interact with. So this is how it works. And if you're interested in making more make automations like this yourself, I've made a simple video that you can watch. I'll edit it here and in the description of the video as well. But there you have it. So if you think about it, our imagination here is the limit because we can add many, many tools. Like as I said, make.com officially supports more than 2000 tools. So Google, Telegram, WhatsApp, whatever you can basically think of. Probably your CRM is also there or your email client. And what you can do is just try to copy something that I've built and create this MCP that'll be calling your no code tools where you can store and manage your accounts and create these connections that'll be executing your actions with your favorite tools through one MCP. But I think this is just the beginning. I think in the future we'll have more cloud-based MCPs where you do not have to go through this process of installing files locally, go into the cloud or ChatGPT configs, probably directly in the interface, you'll be able to add an MCP, specify maybe variables like your API token or stuff like this. But there's no doubt this is the future of AI agents. And I think from here on, it'll be just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So to stay updated for more videos like this and other tools, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And if you like this video, please give it a like and hit that bell notifications button. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.